What is going on everybody? It is Trey from Half Street High Heat and today I'm bringing you the Nationals MLB roster preview. Uh, this will be uploaded on opening day be right before the game starts uh, because the Nats still haven't released their full roster but like we kind of know who's going to be there. So uh, instead of doing like a super well edited video that I put a lot of time and energy into uh, I figured I would make a bad PowerPoint and then just record myself reacting to it. So <laughs> that's that's what we're going to do instead because the Nationals base running video took so much out of me. Uh, anyways, I was also thinking about uh, potentially adding in uh, the prospects and like the whole, the whole organization into this video. But I think what I'm going to do instead is I'm actually going to wait. And I just realized my mic was way over here, so that was probably not good. But I, I, whatever, it's fine. Uh, anyways, for prospect stuff, I'm just going to wait uh, until probably, you know, around the All-Star break just to see how everyone's doing, you know? I don't know. We don't know how they're going to do. Gonna, uh, we could have some guys uh, going up or down or whatever. So I uh, kind of just want to wait till, till mid-season to kind of do like a check-in type of, type of deal with them. So uh, this is just going to be for the opening day roster, and uh, that's going to be how it is. So anyways, as you can see, um, I have a PowerPoint that I made, so it's going to be the same quality as something you would see from a fifth grader. Uh, anyways, let's go ahead and start. Epic wow! All right, so first off, we've got the infielders. Um, for reference, I have included some pictures of some guys who play the infield in Major League Baseball. Uh, Key Brian Hayes is a third baseman, and Brendan Donovan is a utility player. Uh, in case you forgot what type of players and positions play the infield, I have included this guide for you. Uh, so yes, these will be catchers, first baseman, second baseman, shortstop, and third baseman. Let us move on to starting catcher, K-Bear Ruiz. He's doing the ice in his veins thing on the thing. Um, yeah, so with Ruiz here, he's got the eight-year extension. Uh, he's got all-star potential. We've seen, we've seen flashes of it, if he can put it all together. Uh, and he has been, throughout the course of spring training, embracing a leadership role, kind of trying to be, you know, it makes sense. He's the first guy that got paid in this group, and he, he's going to be the most responsible right now because he does have that contract. So um, I think that is, you know, the team's performance is, is in his mind, probably going to reflect on how he's doing as a leader as well. Also, probably cuddles effectively. I added this because, you know, he just... he. he it's in the, it's in the name. He just just looks like a big cuddly bear. He's a really quiet guy. Probably just wants to just curl by the fire. Also, he's a switch hitter, so I added a a flipped reversed picture just to so that we know that he's a switch hitter. So, moving on. Yeah, at uh, first base, Dominic Smith. Uh, so this was a pickup by Baldy in the off season. He's looking for a bounce back. Uh, he never really had, you know, the proper time or situation in New York. You know, he was kind of always blocked by Pete Alonzo at first base. They tried him out in left field. It was a disaster. Hopefully we don't see him out there at any point this year, him or Joey, please, um, because he's a great first base defender. We need that first base defense over there. We got some young infielders that uh, might need some help sometimes. So that'll be good over there. And, you know, he just seems like a nice guy, honestly. Just genuinely talking. Seems like a nice dude. Does a lot with, with, the, uh, with the kids. Uh, has his own foundation, uh, does a lot of stuff with inner city kids, especially. I believe that's what his foundation is for. Um, but yeah, no, he's, he seems like a great dude. I really wish him success this season. Moving on to second base. Actually, wait, I think it's Joey first. Yeah, first base slash DH Joey Manessis. He'll probably be playing mostly DH for the Nationals if all goes well. Um, I, I've included the picture of him for, from Team Mexico because... Um, he was just so great. He was just so great in that tournament. It was it was fun. Uh, but can he replicate? It was a small sample size. We don't know. We, we genuinely don't. I mean, he was so good. But is is that him? Was he just really hot? We don't we don't know. Um, I like to believe that that's not him, but that he can still be a successful player because he has a great hitting approach. He sprays the ball all over the field. He's not necessarily looking to home run every pitch he picks his spots when it's when it's time to hit for power he knows when um and i would like to see his walk rate go up a little bit but uh you know if he's gonna end up hitting anywhere close to what he did last year 
he should do whatever he wants. Also, I am a little worried because he does wear his sombrero a bit too silly. And as you guys are aware, that brings out the dangerous sea bear uh, from hibernation to potentially attack. So he'll need to be drawing a sea bear resistance circle as quickly as possible. Moving on. Second baseman, Luis Garcia. Um, that's, that's the, mm, that's the wrong one. Um, all right, uh, let's, let's go to the next one. Okay, uh, here we go. Luis Garcia. Still, there's just, there's, there's, there's entirely too many Luis Garcias. Let's try it. Let's try it one more time. There we go. There he is. Look at him. Look at him with the chain on. That's that's the real one. That's the one from the Nats. Anyways, Luis Garcia, uh, coming into his first season. I know it feels like he's been here for forever, but this is the first time he's he's breaking camp with the squad. Uh, he did not last year, despite being on the team for most of the season. Uh, and I think that's a big deal. You know, he's established. This is his his position is set. He's gonna play second base, which is his natural position. I mean, hopefully, I mean, he'll probably get a couple looks at shortstop just because, you know, stuff happens. But hopefully that is a thing of the past for the most part because he is way better at second base. Obviously, his hitting style is so interesting because he has great hands. He's got great bat-to-ball scale, but he doesn't really walk. And uh, that can be a problem if you, you know, with a guy who's a high average hitter and low walk rate hitter, if you get in a slump, you can really see it. So he's, we got to see how consistent can he be. And he does not have braces anymore. I know that this picture on the left has braces, but I've also included this one. Look at those chompers. Look at those absolute chompers. No braces. Uh, hanging out with his with his friend, uh, Hunter Harvey. I was going to say his nickname that I made up for him, but we'll wait until later. Anyways, let's move on to shortstop CJ Abrams. Yes, the big, the big fish in the, in the pond of guys that we got for Juan Soto and Josh Bell. Uh, he came up last year, and he flashed the speed. He flashed the incredible defensive range. He was great in both of those aspects. He's going to be an absolute force on the bases this year, hopefully with the new pickoff rules. And uh, his his defense is impressive. Like, <laughs> genuinely, yeah. Like, yeah, I mean, if you watched him last year, it's you don't need to see the metrics. The eye test tells you what you need. Um, unfortunately, he is still hitting ground balls because Davey said so. Um now I I get that the 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 pull the pushback on this is like well sometimes some guys gotta recalibrate by trying to hit the ball hard up the middle on the ground, um, but he doesn't have a home run with the Nats at all and like hasn't really like hit one high enough in the air to even do that, so I'm a little worried. But I also included this picture of grass for reference in case anybody wants to know where Davy wants C.J. Abrams to hit the ball um, directly into the grass. So at least one of us is touching grass. Uh, but yeah, no, C.J. should be great, hopefully. Uh, if the bat can catch up to where the glove and the speed are, then we are looking at an absolute superstar, folks. Okay. And finally, around the infield, Jamer Candelario, this was a very, very interesting pickup to me, and I think it's got the potential to work out. Um, you know, he's got that gap-to-gap -gap power. He led the league in doubles in 2021, I believe, or something, 2019. One of those. Led the league in doubles, so he can he can put it out there. He's a switch hitter, uh, and he is actually better as a righty as opposed to a lefty. Uh, so that's good for the Nats because, you know, Ruiz is better as a lefty as opposed to a righty, so good balance there. Also, he's got dad energy. As you can see, he is with his child here in this picture of him as a Detroit Tiger. And as I said, he was a switch hitter, so I made sure to flip the image just so that we know he's a switch hitter. Uh, he does it from both sides. So, uh, But yeah, I think that could be, this has the potential to be a really good pickup. And then you're looking at, if you come, come all-star break and you're like, this guy's still in his 20s. Like, you could probably get him on a decent extension, like for like a cheaper price, you know, um, if that's the direction they would look to go if he was playing really well, or they could look to potentially trade him for a prospect. But either way, um, there is some, there is some upside here for sure. Anyways, now we are heading towards the outfield uh, as the same 
thing here, I included a guide in case you didn't know the outfield positions or had forgotten them over the offseason. So that includes left field, center field, and right field. And I included pictures of Chris Bryant as well as Mickey Moniak, uh, who are two outfielders. So here we go. This one's weird, okay? This one's, this one's going to be weird. Bear with me. Uh, we don't really have a definitive starter for left field. And what's probably going to end up happening, at least what I would think they would do, is try to platoon Alex Call and Corey Dickerson early in the season to see how that goes. Because Corey Dickerson cannot hit lefties. Can't do it. So you got to have somebody in there that can hit lefties. Alex Call should be able to hit lefties way better than Corey Dickerson can. Um, but at the same time, Alex Call is better, guys. I think so. I mean, I'm, I'm an Alex Call truther right now. So I'm hoping that he is actually as good as I think he could be. Which is like, I'm not saying he's going to be an all-star, but I think he can contribute in a positive way for the squad. And uh, I don't know if Dickerson can. So we're going to have to wait and see. Obviously, I'd love both of them to excel. That would be awesome. But uh, yeah, that's where we're, where we're at. Um, you know, if Dickerson takes the starting role, then Alex Call would be the fourth outfielder. But like, I think Call is going to see his fair share of time in the lineup, especially early on because he, his approach in spring training was just so cool and good and fun. Okay, next one. Center field, Victor Robles. Back again. He's back. It's the Victor. It's the man. Um, what can you say about Vic? I mean, as, as you can see at the bottom, I just said, show me something. Show all of us something. We're all doubting you, man. Most of us are. I won't say all. I know there are groups of people that, that think Victor Robles could still be good, and he could still be good. He has the skills. He's got the speed. He's got the defense. Uh, his spring training approach was interesting. He definitely looked like a slightly different hitter up there um, because he wasn't trying to swing as hard as he possibly could every time, which kept him more on balance, kept him driving the ball, not not driving the ball, but like, you know, hitting it to right center field, getting, dumping a lot of singles over there. So, uh, you know, if he can just not be a horrendous at the plate, he will bring value to your team with his defense and speed. So um, let's see something. Let's see. Oh, he's he's mad that I was talking talking crap. Okay, I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry. I just I want you to succeed. I'm not trying to be rude. Okay, I just I I want you to win, but it, we just haven't seen it. So just under just under you got to get where I'm coming from. Stop staring at me like that. I don't like it. Okay, in right field, we got Lane Thomas. My transition didn't work there for some reason. But we got Lane Thomas, the Lane train in right field. Um, he's got the rocket arm out there. He's perfect for right field because of that. Uh, he crushes lefties. He's done it his whole life. That's where he hits majority of his home runs. But what is he? We don't even, we can't, I can't tell, man. Because I was almost about to write him off about halfway through last season. And then he, he started hitting. He started hitting again like he did at the end of 21. And I was like... Who are you? <laughs> Lane, who are you, buddy? Can you be a guy that can play every day? Can you only play against lefties? Can you be a starting outfielder? We're going to find out very very quickly, I think. Uh, because as with Victor Robles, Lane Thomas it should be looking over his shoulder saying, Alex Call. Alex Call's right there, man. He's right there. And I he's been the most impressive to me out of those three since he came to the majors last year. So... Show me something. Again, show me something. What are you, buddy? Let's find out. All right, so next, we got the full bench mob. You can maybe include Alex Call in this, but probably not. We got these three uh, fine, handsome gentlemen here. They are all, you know, they got they got different looks, but they're all, like, good looks. You know what I'm saying? Like, Chavis has, like, the dirty the dirty man look, but, he, like, he's, like, he's got a nice smile. Good-looking dude. Il Damaro, best smile on the team, I think. I mean... I'm sure that there's plenty of ladies who would who would who love that smile um, as much as I do. And Riley Adams, tall, handsome gentleman. He's got it ain't Sean Murphy, but there's some cake. So, ladies, dudes, let me know. <laughs> that was so stupid. Anyways, that was the bench. I accidentally skipped before I was even ready. But now we're doing starters. <laughs> this video is gonna be terrible. All right. Anyways, let's go. Um, 
I, for this, so obviously I ma made sure to include that these are pitchers who start in case you were confused. Um, but uh, for these two, there's two examples of starting pitchers. Um, low res Jacob deGrom and Dylan Bundy. So if you needed to know what a starter was, now you know. First starter is Patrick Corbin. Second starter, Josiah Gray. I have much more to say about him. Uh, so we saw we saw Josiah come up last year and have success with the strikeouts, uh, with, especially with his breaking pitches. His slider and curveball really excelled last year. Um, but, you know, obviously that didn't help him prevent runs. So he added a cutter in the offseason as a way to try and get left-handed pitchers and just all players in general off, the, off of his fastball because his fastball got destroyed last year. Uh, and that cutter looked really, really good in spring. He had like a .5 ERA and six, seven starts, something like that. So that was good. Didn't give up a homer because he needs to limit him. He gave up the most in the league last year. It's not a secret. Dinger Tuesday, Josiah was on the mound. You're betting it. Uh, so, you know, uh, I liked what I saw in spring. He was getting a lot more ground ball outs, which is good. So I'm hope I'm hopeful. I'm very hopeful on Josiah this year. I think that that adjustment is really going to help him miss barrels specifically it's not necessarily a strikeout pitch it's just keeping guys from crushing your pitch getting the soft contact which he did he did well in spring hopefully carries that over to the regular season uh and next we've got mckenzie gore the new national who was traded last year but he was injured while while he was traded so we haven't seen him pitch we haven't seen him pitch he got on the bump uh in at nats park in the exhibition yesterday which was good for him. He pitched pretty well. Um, but yeah, we want to see him in a Nats uniform, baby. And uh, he's got some absolutely nasty stuff. That fastball's got crazy carry on it. Gets up to about 97 if he pushes it. Um, Curveball-slider combo is pretty nice. And uh, that changeup is... hes It's a work in progress in terms of locating it. But man, when he gets it right, it can really be deceptive. So the stuff is there. It's all about keeping it in the strike zone. If he walks too many guys, then you're going to start to f see some issues. But I think that he's going to uh, be pretty pretty darn good for the Nats. You're going to have some starts where he walks like five dudes. It's, it's going to happen this year. But uh, if he can keep that under control for most most of the time, he should be fine. So really like Mackenzie Gore. I think uh, he and Josiah Gray, and it was going to be Kate Cavalli. That was going to be a fun trio. But, man, that duo should be still a lot of fun to watch. I'll be tuning in intently every time they play. Seriously. I watch all the games. This d slide didn't work either. Why was the picture there before the name? You wouldn't even know who it was. Look, who is that? Nobody knows. Now you know it's starting pitcher Trevor Williams. Uh, anyways, uh, this guy, this was a good signing, I think, from Rizzo because you sign him as a starter, and I think that he wants to be a starter, and I'd like him to be a starter the whole season because he can eat, he can eat innings. Uh, for you. He's not necessarily a guy who's going to go out there and dominate, but like he knows how to get outs. He knows how to coax soft contact, ground balls. Not a huge strikeout guy, but he's a reliable veteran. And uh, he has the ability to be a swing man. If, say, the starting thing doesn't work out, then you put him in the bullpen and maybe you start him sometimes, or you can bring him out of the bullpen to pitch multiple innings. He did that a lot for the Mets last year and he was very successful. Also, really funny. Uh, he had an interview this spring on Masson that was cracking me up, man. Uh, so <laughs> I hope he finds success because he's funny as shit and I want him to stay here. Uh, so let's go to the final starter. As I said, Cavalli is no longer with us. R.I.P. Just He didn't die. He just got elbow. Um, but uh, So his replacement will be starting pitcher Chad Cool, who was not particularly good with the Colorado Rockies last year, but then again, who is, really? Um, it's pronounced cool, even though it's spelled Cahool. Uh, he's got four decent pitches. Um, he uses a lot of movement, horizontally specifically, to try and coax swing and misses, and that can lead to walks. And so that is, especially in the situation he's in as the fifth starter, we really need him to get to that five-inning mark every day. If he can get five, four or five innings every day, pitch efficiently that way, I think that we can make this work. Um, if you push him past that and you get him third time around the order, you're, you're going to start seeing those numbers go way up. 
So he's definitely a guy where you he's got to have the quick hook. If he starts getting hit hard, you got to pull him. Uh, but if if they do that, I think he can find success in this role. And finally, the pen. This is the strongest part of the Nationals team. I can't believe I just said that. Legitimately, honest to God, best part of the team, the bullpen. Here's the squad. Um, so I don't know why I did this, but I decided to give them all uh, weird nicknames. So we've got Dustin May Light, Mason Thompson. They look ex they look identical. They look exactly like each other. Let's be honest. Um, big Country, Hunter Harvey. So I was gonna say Big Country earlier. Big Country is the nickname of a, an, an old NBA player who played for the Vancouver Grizzlies. But it just fits. It just fits too well. So I'm gonna steal it. Uh, honestly, I'm gonna just steal it and give it to Hunter Harvey. He is now Big Country. Uh, Hobie Harris, not Hoobie. Now this is a funny story. I thought his name was Hoobie, and I tweeted it, and then uh, his, I think his friends and family were, saw it as well, because I said I was complimenting him. I was t talking about his changeup, which is nasty, but I got the name wrong, and then he actually replied to me on Twitter, uh, which was fun. He was really cool about it, super cool about it, so uh, not Hoobie, it's, it's Hobie, Hobie Harris. Remember the name. It's, I didn't at first, but now, now I will. Um, he showed off one of the most wicked changeups I saw all spring. So I'm, I'm hopeful that he's actually legit because um, he looked really good. So he earned it. Good job. Good job, Hobie, for making the team. Um, yeah, and then we got the Eraser. That's a real nickname for Rosmo Ramirez. He was so reliable for the Nats last year. He can eat multiple innings out of the bullpen. He can open for you if you need him to. Um, so... Definitely reliable, and he just got outs. Dude came in, got outs, sub three ERA, most appearances in the league, most innings for a reliever in the league, and he had a sub three, so quite good. Then we've got a uh, tea bag, Kyle Finnegan. If you know, you know. Uh, I, I'm a little worried about Finnegan this year. He had a good year last year, but I feel like they maybe should have sold high on him at the deadline, and they didn't. Uh, and they want him to make. They want him to be the closer, and I don't think he's the closer. I think if you use him in the sixth and seventh inning, you'll have a lot more success than if you use him in the eighth or ninth. Because I think the eighth or ninth needs to be res reserved for guys like Hunter Harvey and Mason Thompson and Carl Edwards. Um, so that's kind of what I was looking at there. But like, you never know. He he has stuff is pretty good. He doesn't necessarily locate the best, which is he throws a sinker up in the zone a lot, which is. You're just kind of asking for it at that point, but it, it it's it's all right. I think as long if they don't overuse him, I think he'll be okay. Um, now my meanest nickname by far that I almost didn't put in this video because it's really rude, but <laughs> DFA'd by June, before June, Anthony Anthony Banda Banda, however you pronounce it. Listen, I'm just being realistic here. The only reason this guy's in our pen is because. We don't have a lefty. Uh, Sean Doolittle was supposed to be in camp, and he's hurt and probably not going to pitch again. Uh, and then the other lefties we have are a little too young. Uh, so that's kind of why he's here. And, uh, you know, I'm not expecting it to go well, as you can see by the nickname. So anyways, moving on to CEJ 2.0. This nickname is kind of a stretch, but he is kind of a different pitcher than he used to be when he was on the Cubbies. Uh, there's that cut fastball a lot more now. There's a change up a lot more now. Um, gets more ground ball outs. Uh, but yeah, no, he was he was great when he came up last year. Kind of found him out of nowhere. Kind of didn't think he was going to even make the team at any point last year just because it was so slow. And then he was great. So I'm hoping that he can repeat that uh, and and potentially give us some good innings out of the pen again. And finally, we've got Thad Castle, Thaddeus Ward. Um, Blue Mountain State fans, where you at? Anyways, this was the guy that we got in the Rule 5 draft from the Boston Red Sox, which means that he had to start the team, or he has to be on the roster uh, to to stay on the team, or otherwise he'd be transferred back to Boston. Uh, but he did great in spring, and he's absolutely earned this roster spot. He's a guy that can be a multi-inning reliever. He has one of the most wicked sliders in this bullpen, for sure, um, if not the best. So... Uh, looking forward to what he can bring as a potential uh, long relief guy. He can pick up two innings. He can start if he if we need him to open, whatever. So there's a lot of options with him. 
and I'm excited to see Thad, uh, Thad, Thad get a chance. Thaddeus, Thaddeus. He wants to go by Thaddeus, so I gotta remember that. Um, anyways, that's the end of the video. Bye.